Okay, we're not having any luck. This batch, if you're watching, please don't send me here anymore. I don't want to have to go through this. So much stress. You don't want to mess with me. Look at that. Look at that. Not even a fist. I told him I need to make a right turn over there. I asked him to back up. He said, get to the right side of him. He'll back up and I can go to the left and make a wider right turn. But now another man parked on the right side with his little car and everybody stuck behind him and they can't go because that man over there thought that this guy was going straight on the street light but he walked out of his car and he went inside the building i had that gut feeling as i did on my first day of car hauling like in my stomach just nervous try to figure things out correctly not panic because when you panic you have mistakes this is the truck package i wanted to show you guys these ramps slide out to the side here. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Oh yeah, pizza's on David. Just on the side of the road here we're about to get ready for another trip and park the tr park the car over here oh oh where's where are you going hey someone's stealing my car like a homeless man getting dropped off on the side of the road we'll be back in 30 minutes left my phone number on here just in case but yeah, look at this wide lane over here. Why not park over here and walk over to my subdivision right there? Saves me the time from having to go to the yard, grab my truck, drive over here with the truck. Got to spend some time with the family, wife, and kids. And we actually just have one more day on the road. We're about to get out on the road. I set my Tesla in autopilot going back home. There it is. And the reason why I stopped home, well, because I can. And also maybe because we had a little bit of an issue with a delivery. I'm going to Chicago and I gotta go straight into the heart of Chicago, into downtown, where they have a Volkswagen dealership. That's apparently underground parking. I loaded up last night with Volkswagens. Drove out, realized that my paperwork says that my last drop is only open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I don't know why, but apparently they allow you to deliver until 4 p.m. I have no idea why they close it so early. It's a downtown location. It should be open till seven or eight. But of course, people are lazy. Nobody wants to work. Who knows? So I realized I wasn't gonna make it there by 2 p.m. My ETA was around four to 5 p.m. their time. So I said, I either go home and stay home for the rest of the week, because it was already Thursday morning, or I stopped by at home today, a few hours, chillax, and then make my way into Chicago tonight, sleep somewhere at a truck stop. Because all of you know, once you get past those first two truck stops into Chicago, there's nothing else in Chicago. There are little truck stops like Toronto's or whatever it's called. But there's like 15 truck parkings there and obviously there isn't going to be no spot for us even if we come there in the middle of the day so what do we got to do we got to go drive one more day we decided to do our deliveries for friday morning as soon as they open i might be able to get my first drop in today i got a total of three drops first drop i'll get in today thursday night and the other two i'm gonna have to get in tomorrow because my second drop there's a dude there that walks around and checks out all the panels like this. And obviously he's gonna find little tiny factory defects like little dust particles, tiny little marks in the black plastic pieces underneath. And guess what? He will mark down anything he sees. Even if it's like something that can get wiped away and you wipe it away in front of him and he's like, oh, it was still a damage but like there's nothing there of course they got to make their money somehow because sales aren't going as good for them uh 2023 everything keeps going downhill even more and more anyways it's not as bad as it seems i'm just over exaggerating 
ready to hit the road. We got like a six hour drive to Chicago from where I live. And of course, welcome back to the Gen Z channel. If you're new here, subscribe, hit that like button. Also, don't miss out. Make sure to check out the link in the description or on my channel page to get yourself a t-shirt like this. Let's get right into this video. Grab your snacks, grab your drinks, because this is gonna be a two day video. Huh, we're gonna have to watch this video for two days straight? No, nope, no. Nope. I mean, I'm gonna start recording today and finish probably tomorrow night, which is Friday night tomorrow. So buckle in and let's get right into the video. Oh man, what an embarrassment. I was talking all of that talk with my bed not done. It's a little bit embarrassing, you know, cause I'm a neat guy. And I just can't have you guys see that, you know? So we gotta do it. That's embarrassing. I'm a neat guy and I can't, I can't stand seeing my bed sheets undone. It was an early morning for me. Got up at like 5.30 and I'm like, let's hop behind the wheel and start driving. Obviously after we did our pre-chip inspection. But we got that fixed. Oh, still a little bit, you know. Gotta hide that mattress bed sheet cover. Ah, there we go, that, that'll do. Practice makes perfect. Always stay neat, always stay organized. You might think that bed sheets don't really matter, but it starts with the bed sheets and then it goes down all the way to your finances. Compass Travel Center where we stopped and made a full review in one of our shorts. I'll drop the video down in the description if you missed it. But this is one of the nicest truck stop places that I've stopped at. It has restaurants, it has really nice showers, it has a very nice driver lounge. Everything in general is just brand new. Really nice truck stop. If you're ever passing through it in Indiana, make sure to check it out. So what do we got here? get our pen so Cincinnati oh let's do a checklist boom okay whatever let's cross it off we passed Cincinnati now we passed Indianapolis checklist that as well last thing that we got to do is get into Chicago yeah look at my handwriting obviously that's why I'm a truck driver and not a teacher at school my handwriting sucks, I know. Reason I stopped here, I'm just gonna grab some food, stretch my legs a little bit, walk around, check out this neat place, and then we're gonna keep on going. We got another 48 minutes. That's not bad to our first drop. Let's lower the seat, not the window. Let's lower the seat. That's how we drive. Reason, had to pick it up because I have too much sun in my eyes. Also, I want to show you guys my load on the truck. First off, I like the blue vehicle. Almost looks like a metallic blue, like, eh, looks nice. We got the same color vehicle right here. These are all Volkswagen Atlases. We got a couple cross sports. Cross sports and regular Atlases. Not too big of a difference. But yeah, we got the 
three vehicles at the bottom two at the top we have i loaded it up in a special way because we're going into the heart of chicago that's going to be fun and our last drop is this car and this car reason i put them down here is just because if we run into any low bridges any branches since we are going into chicago i'd rather have the whole top unloaded and have these vehicles hiding down here just in case we run into anything let's hope we don't run into anything we should be good but now we're headed inside so much empty fuel pumps this place typically isn't busy but we still didn't park at the fuel pumps before we went inside last time i did because it was fully empty but this time i just parked in a regular spot even though it still wasn't a regular spot there it is the new freightliner standing inside the truck stop they even got a trailer in here but this is what i want to show you guys i've been practicing my shots we got a couple couches here you can relax at last time i threw it and it was way further and i made it with my first throw not this time okay we're not having any luck Oof, that was close. All right, let's try. Okay, whatever. Let's keep going. We're not good. Big truck stop. Hunt Brothers Pizza. Last time I called it Brothers Hunt Pizza. But yes, we're going to Dunkin' Donuts. That's the restaurant right there. Roadhouse Grill. Let's get ourselves something from here. Oh my. As I said, I wouldn't get, but nobody has to know. Game room slash massage chair room slash TV room don't mind that that's not ours this one is ours looking kind of small oh yeah it is it's a bit small but it'll do for now bathrooms and we're out I wanted to show you guys the fuel pumps themselves. So they got these big screens here and they're touch screen. You can select what you want. Pretty unique. You only see that at European truck stops. Most of these drivers here are doing 30 minute breaks, 40 minute breaks or 10 hour restarts at the fuel pumps. I get too much hate in the comments if I park at the fuel pumps. So fuel pumps is off limits for me now. I guess we can park out here. It's not too bad. I can get my exercise. Whew, and we're back in and we're back in the truck. Let's see what we got here because I don't even know. It, it looked like the only decent thing on their menu. I don't have much Dunkin' Donuts. I had no idea what to get. So I got some kind of chicken. I don't even know. Some kind of wrap. That's basically a wrap, but like, it's this small. I guess it's a snack. Man, that sun won't leave us alone. Let's do a review for this chicken whatever it is from Dunkin' Donuts. It's not bad. I, it's edible. Me reading through the comments someone's gonna be like hey trucker watch your diet watch what you eat it's not healthy for you it, it's healthy it, it it's healthy or shall i say healthier or er <laughs> whatever we could have had worse but this is all right and we're back up here yep as high as the ceiling, as high as it can go. 
that sun, that sun. It's alright, it's almost nighttime soon. Had my burrito. This is the only thing I drink when I'm on the road. Uh, it's called Deer Park. I don't know what's inside, but it just tastes good. We're done with our little break here. We got another 48 minutes, and we're going to be at our first drop where I'm going to be dropping off one, two, three, four vehicles. Four vehicles at the first drop, then we're going to go sleep at our second drop. They told me I can sleep there. I've unloaded there before, and they're going to open up at 7.30 their time. That means that's 8.30 Eastern time. So that's the plan. Catch you at my first drop. All right, never mind. Six minutes down the road, and we're entering into another truck stop. Just to go for a walk, stretch the legs out a little. Not. Reason is because I don't want to have to deal with empty tanks tomorrow, and we're going to be in Chicago. I got less than half of fuel in each tank. And that's an issue because by the time we get un unloaded tomorrow, we're going to have to fill up somewhere and there is no truck stops in Chicago that I can fill up at. I'm confused now we just got so as you can see we were on the half mark now we're at the full mark so we filled up more than half of two tanks so that's considered a full tank of diesel each tank is about honestly I don't even know how many gallons each tank is but we filled up over one tank and apparently it's telling us that we filled up for forty dollars and sixty one cents must be international cheap fuel day for all I know I think we've made it we might be at the right spot hopefully we're about to find out not like I haven't been here like five times before this it's dark outside already we're parked in the center lane of the road we got cars coming on the right cars slowly coming from the left and this is where we got to unload. I always unload here in the middle. They do have an entrance into the dealership, but it's super tight for 80 foot trucks. And they close the gate. Since we're delivering these cars after hours, we can't make it into that gate anyways. But I still wouldn't even pull into the dealership just because we have an 80 foot truck and they have cars all over the place in there that they don't move around because they think that us truck drivers can come in with 80 foot trucks and maneuver around like a little Volkswagen Atlas. But that's not the case. It's easier to park here in the center. As long as you have your safety lights on, put on your reflective vest, and you should be good to roll. Let's get out here. We got four cars to unload here. And I hope we can make it to our second drop. They got a parking lot there that I can sleep on. Let's get rolling. But before we get rolling, I gotta grab my light to put on my head you guys let me know if you think this is funny or not so this is the light and this is the light on my head I look like a coal miner don't judge I'm just trying to do my job properly so this light is super super bright best light out there I've been doing this for four years almost and November is gonna be four years and check this light out boom can't even see can't even see me it's so bright that it's blinding the camera lens anyways I got a headlight on my head we should be good to take good pictures of all the cars for the delivery inspection and that's why you got to have a good light when you're taking cars off after hours you want to turn on a bright light and take really good photos of all the cars trailer lights on right here and behind the sleeper lights on so let's get out here, wait for some of these cars to pass, and we're ready to grab our vest, oops, throw on our vest, get our stick, which is right here.
now we're safe. You can even tell in the camera, it reflects pretty good. Grab our keys. We don't want to lock our keys in here. Grab the stick. Hey, slow down. Slow down. And let's get to work. So, I just unstrapped a car that I wasn't supposed to unstrap. Totally forgot that I loaded the bottom car over here and that second car under the sleeper that are going to our last drops. My bad. A little bit of unusual loading right here. So it's actually one, two, three, four. Skip this one. So we're gonna start untightening these ones right here. All the cars that I need are unstrapped. I don't know why I just unlocked that one. Alrighty, all the cars that we need are unstrapped now. Now we just gotta fix these pins. Now we just gotta fix these pins, put them in the right spots. Cause we're gonna have to lower the trailer down once we get these cars off from the bottom. And as we go, usually we gotta lift this back car up. So I fix all the straps just like that. Tighten them up. All right, everything's up. I gotta go, gotta go inside, grab the keys for the vehicles and take them off. All right. We got everything up. Cars are ready to be taken off. Got our keys. And no, the keys do not lay in the cars while they're getting transported. Can't tell you where they lay. That's a secret you'll never know. And our entrance to the dealership is right over there. So we gotta wait for these cars to stop coming and we can roll this one off. There we go. Roll it off and we roll right into here, which they have barricaded the back and they've barricaded this entrance by putting three cars there. But that's fine because they have a few parking spots over here. So there's our Volkswagen dealership. There's the car. And there's our truck. And then there's a bunch of other cars barreling at me and I gotta wait for all of them to pass before I can cross to my truck. I'm not gonna be running across. I'll just wait till they get the next red light. There we go. Safely cross over. So we got that one that still needs to come off. That one right there and red one at the top. Four cars are off. Just gotta do the inspection, take pictures, and we're gonna hit the road. There's nothing much more for us to do here. All right, we got unloaded. Now we got 38 minutes to go to our second drop. We're gonna be dropping two cars there. We'll see once I get there if I wanna drop them tonight or in the morning. And my light just went out. So let's head over there. So 
we made it to our second drop it's like almost midnight here and I don't think I'm gonna unload right now it's a nice big empty parking lot like they said last time I was here they were repaving all of this section so all those cars were over here it was just packed up I pulled in from there tried to leave from there but there was cars all along here so I told them you gotta move four cars they didn't like that but they still moved them for me but that's the end of our Thursday tomorrow's Friday we got this drop two cars one two coming off these two are staying and those two will be going to Chicago downtown literally in the center that's why I loaded them at the bottom so I know we're gonna see some branches somewhere either way so I loaded them at the bottom because if they were up there oh I know for sure I'd hit something some kind of branches some kind of wires because if you're going into that type of area Chicago downtown oof you don't want anything to be on the top we're gonna spend the night here I need to go get my rest I'm gonna catch up with you guys in the morning Ooh, it's morning time told them to come out it's time to do an inspection on them get him signed off for and head to our last drop we got that signature now it's time to get in this truck and do our last drop here we go now let me explain what we got to do with our last drop if they see it could work only in here anytime I park the truck it sits and the sun comes out so the sun's coming out it's getting hot outside and anytime the truck is sitting in one spot most of the time it's when the PTO is on that my that my AC stops working good so it's still working but it's like really really weak and I don't like that I like to have it really nice and chilly in here so the place we just delivered to it wasn't too bad of a job this is where we're at and we are to the west side of Chicago, kind of southwest a little bit. Now, where we gotta go is this address right here. And that address is right over here. So, if we click directions, this is the route that we gotta take and we already got a bunch of delays because of traffic. So, we are going right here and that's like in the tiny little streets of downtown and we're gonna be unloading in like a little area with a bunch of tall buildings around us the streets are pretty narrow there's a bunch of tree branches for this I always turn on the satellite and what I do I already looked through this whole route but for an example I put myself on this road right here I see this bridge I'm gonna be taking this exit right over here this ramp and there's a North Milwaukee Avenue. I put myself on the street, turn on the, the, the map view, the, the little guy you put on the map. This bridge has no sign. That means it should be good. Hopefully it's good. Another thing that I can do is put myself on this ramp and uh, see if there's any signs before then, which there isn't. And just to make sure right before this exit I'll put myself right here and I'm gonna double check if it says no trucks on this exit look at all this busy Chicago stuff right here so so far so good I don't see an issue we should be able to take this exit also 
our trucker GPS is taking us this way, but I still always like to double check. And this is why I loaded the cars at the bottom. So just in case we do meet like a 13.6 bridge or, or a lower, we're good. We're at 13 feet with our poles that hold. We're at 13 feet with our rope poles. So right here, there's another bridge up ahead. And that's the bridge we looked at. And this is the bridge that's in front. And all these bridges seem to be fine. So then I just do this down the whole road. Here's one, uh, here's another bridge with a railroad track. Railroad track bridges are usually lower, but even this one doesn't say anything. So we're, I think we'll be good. We're gonna go down this road all the way down here. There's no more bridges here. And then we're gonna hit up, um, what street is it? We're gonna hit up, one of these streets but I already looked through all of it pretty much there's like four bridges all of them don't have signs and then after that we're good we just have a couple little streets a couple tight turns and we got to park right in the middle of the road and unload into a little parking garage this is a different address than the dealership address they sent me here because the address that they usually take deliveries on is having some big concert that's going on and they blocked off all the roads closed them off so that people can walk on them and yeah, so we gotta go to this address now. It's looking pretty good. Trucker GPS is taking me right to it. Wish me luck. Let's get there safely without any issues. I'll catch you guys there. Look what we got here. We got a two car enclosed truck, hot shot. Then we got another enclosed truck. He just pulled in in front of me here. I'm blocking an alley. I'm blocking a paid parking zone, but I got no choice. I gotta deliver my cars into there. So I really gotta be quick, unload these here and take off before I get a ticket but there's nothing more I can do because he needs his space, he needs his space. Cars can get around me, one lane's open. I'm parked super close to this guy. 
But yeah, this is how we got on load, boys and girls. It was all right getting in here. There was a bunch of low tree branches, a bunch of signs that says no trucks. But once I'm done unloading here, I'm gonna have to make a right turn around the two car trailer. I'm gonna have to ask him to back up because he's too far up and I'm gonna hit him with my trailer. And also this guy here, man, this is gonna be interesting. Wish us luck. This batch, if you're watching, please don't send me here anymore. I don't want to have to go through this. So much stress, so much worry. But I'll be fine, I guess. What else can I do? Oh, trust me. You don't want to mess with me. Look at that, look at that. Not even a fist to the door. So that there's enough space on the other side for cars to get around. Volkswagen in downtown. Oh. So we had a little situation here orange reliable truck he came in behind me blocked off this whole road had to move him over to the sides make a little bit of a gap between me and him for cars to get through now we gotta back up down the street and of course they got the whole entrance blocked off to get inside to this Volkswagen. Come on guys, let's get off the road. Almost looks as if I had just hit that car with my wheel. This is crazy. And they're even making this walk out here. So I delivered right over there. And now I gotta go across the street to get someone to come sign for the vehicles. Chicago is a whole different story. Well, so much work just to get signatures and while those guys wait for me across the street and I'm gonna have to make a right turn over there on the, onto this road but I'm nef never gonna make this right turn if those two trucks don't get out of the way so wish me luck boys and girls yeah I'm gonna have to try to get to move that two car enclosed he might be picking up, but who knows. So I talked to this guy right here. I told him I need to make a right turn over there. I asked him to back up. He said, get to the right side of him, he'll back up and I can go to the left and make a wider right turn. But now another man parked on the right side with his little car and everybody's stuck behind him and they can't go because that man over there thought that this guy was going straight on the street light but he walked out of his car and he went inside the building. So we're trapped for now until that guy comes back and I don't know how long that's gonna be but I can't go anywhere else except for make that right turn. We made the turn and now we gotta figure out how to get onto another street that's on the right. There's a bigger road further down. Should be able to make a right turn because we gotta make a right and get turn a left to get back on the street that we came in from. doing now I tried to get it back onto I-90 South I think it is I tried to get back onto I-90 East but it's closed the ramp was closed so I have to go I-90 West 
take another ramp, turn around, get back onto I-90 West. Ooh, guys. About when I started car hauling, a year into it, you worry, you know, you have this worry feeling like, am I gonna make it into this dealership? Am I gonna clear that curb? Am I gonna make this turn? Am I gonna be able to park there? So you have those rookie feelings where like, you're not confident in yourself and you're and you have a big worry in your gut I know this has I know a lot of car haulers who begin it takes them quite a while to get over that gut worrying once you do it about a thousand times it's it's easy it's nothing to it but once but you get over it over a certain period of time so what I'm trying to say is getting into the Chicago job never been here I had that gut feeling as I did on my first day of car hauling. Like, in my stomach, just nervous, try to figure things out correctly, not panic, because when you panic, you have mistakes. So today was all about that gut feeling. So much stuff had to happen. I pulled up, two trucks were already there, parked in front of me on the left side. I think they were picking up vehicles because they weren't unloading anything and they were just standing there the whole time I was unloading. Then I parked behind them. I wasn't really blocking anything that needed access. So I parked behind them and I was about to start unloading. A reliable truck pulled in behind me. I don't blame him. It's his job. That's what he needs to do. He kind of blocked the way for cars to get through that street. And this street is a high traffic street. So lots of people use it. I had to back him up had to get out into the street, make a bunch of cars stop, back him up, straighten him out to the right side and make a little gap between his front end and my back ramps for cars to fit through. Everybody's freaking out, I need to go over there, I need to go over there. And I'm like, maybe you can use another street. They're like, no, we don't need to go over there. So, so I had to kind of calm the situation down. The guy was just gonna stand there. I was like, let me back you up. Let's make a gap between you so that traffic can get through. I backed him up. Cars were able to get around. I unloaded my two cars, had to run across the street, get a signature. The lady was about to tell me, oh, there's no more space in this parking garage. You have to go somewhere else. And I'm like, there's four trucks out there. We got to get out of here because we're making a bunch of traffic. People are getting angry. So once I was done unloading, I had to uh, make a right turn. There's nowhere else I can go past that point. I had to make a right turn. So I went in front and told the guy with the two car trailer, hey, I gotta get through. I gotta keep it as far left as I can to make that right turn. Can you back up so I can just go through here? He's like, ha, I can't go anywhere, but if you want, you can go to the right side of me. I'll back up and then you can kind of get more towards the middle and make that right wide right turn. I'm like, I looked at the situation and I'm like, all right, that should be fine. <clears throat> so that's what we did. I made that right turn and then now I'm about to get through this next ramp, get onto I-90 West and get myself out of here. I don't like delivering in Chicago. Chicago is a pretty area, lots of things to do here. The place I delivered, it was really nice. I'd like to visit here on my personal vehicle but not on a truck. So let's make this left turn, try to get out on the ramp. I said we we're trying to get back out onto 90 west, but no, I mean 90 east. So let's let's make this turn. Let's see if we can get through here. And of course we got a red light, but that's fine. That will allow cars to clear up on the left side. There we go. Actually, not we go. There's cars, we don't have a yellow turn signal. We're gonna be stuck here for a little while. Maybe until it turns red. So let's make this left turn. favorite noise definitely not my favorite noise that's how sharp of a left turn I had to take to get onto this ramp but anyways we're out on the road on the main road 
who cares anymore about everything I just said there's somebody taking pictures right there of the downtown well hello <laughs> better not fall out of that car whatever you're doing probably trying to get a picture of downtown or something anyways back through downtown we go let's make our way to Michigan that's where we're gonna be loading up peacefully no sharp turns no low bridges no low branches let's make things happen Somebody's gonna say, quit complaining, quit crying. Talk about the positives. I do. Lots of my videos, I'm always talking about the positives. But, for some reason, when it comes to people watching videos on YouTube, guess which videos do better? Guess which one gets more views? Or somebody's complaining, or somebody said, I got in a wreck, or somebody said, I got pulled over. For some reason, people get entertained by somebody having a more difficult time rather than watching a video that says, everything's good, today was an easy day. You, you pick and choose, you can say that no, that's not true, but that's how it is. And of course, I'm not just gonna be walking around and telling you guys, oh yeah, that was easy. I wouldn't be saying anything if I wasn't recording. So that would make me not complain. But since I'm recording, I gotta state my thoughts, I gotta state my mind. And to make it more entertaining, I gotta tell you guys about all the difficulties that I just went through. Now of course, if I was constantly complaining, constantly in every video saying, this is hard, you, you might just ask me, why don't you just get a new job? But I don't complain, that's the thing. Lots of times I say, that was easy, that was simple. So if you're trying to start your YouTube videos, keep that in mind. If you complain a little bit here and there, or if you use a thumbnail picture where it says you're having a difficult Monday, it'll do better than where you say, everything is great. It wasn't incredibly difficult. We got through it, we're alive. In most cases, you just gotta know, we'll make it through this. What's the worst that can happen besides getting helicopter lifted out of Chicago with your whole entire truck on strings because you got stuck on a curb somewhere? Either, that would never happen anyways, But that's my point of thought about if you hear me complaining. So I'm not necessarily complaining. I'm not necessarily saying that was hard, that was difficult. That's just me, in a way, almost like being proud of what I just did. And I'm telling you guys, guys, I just, I just had to go through this. I just had to do this. And that makes me a stronger person when I get out of that. So remember the saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And hopefully that was the case for this Daytona right here. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So that was my little rant. That was my little, that was me picking at your brains a little bit, picking at my own brains. I just stopped here. I need to grab some food because I'm hungry. It's already 1 p.m. and we're about to have breakfast, lunch and dinner since we only eat once or twice throughout the day. Let's get our food. And let's keep having this wonderful day. I still gotta load up today, and then we're gonna make it back home tonight. Possibly by midnight. Hey, but that's okay. We'll make it home. Hey, trucker, eat healthy. Nope, not today. I always manage to give in to my needs by the end of the week. I was eating healthy all week. Didn't drink anything but water all week. Until it comes to the end of the week, right around Thursday where I got Dunkin' Donuts last night, 
And now I got Burger King. We're gonna try again next week. And we have made it to our pickup location in Michigan. We gotta load up seven cars here. It's gonna be four F-150s, one Ford Ranger, one Escape, and one Explorer. I'm gonna use the truck package for this load. I don't really like using the truck package on the trailer. But wait, let me take that back because I don't want to be complaining anymore. I don't want to I don't want to make it look like I'm complaining. I'm excited to use the truck package. We're going to be using the truck package right now and we're going to have a fun time using the truck package. Let's get out here and let's load these seven cars. So, there's our truck. Our truck is empty. Let's go load. Oh wait, I forgot my ID. Oh, what? This place is magical. The cars just got on the truck by themselves somehow. What do we got here? Explorer, yellow, stoplight, street light type of uh, Ford Ranger, Ford Escape, and four F-150s. Got them all out. They somehow appeared on my trailer. We got them strapped in. Look at that. I mean, they got strapped in by themselves somehow. Yeah, this place is truly magical. This is the truck package I wanted to show you guys. These ramps slide out to the side here and the roof hides up right over here. Done professionally. So these two trucks on the back, we're using the truck package. We opened up pockets right here, as you can see, cutouts. And those ramps underneath got flipped open and there's holes that we drive the truck into. We grab the front wheels with straps on the bottom and front wheels with straps at the top. And in the backs, I have tied down over here. Also, one more thing, this flipper right here, usually it's out. I have it flipped in because look how much lower the wheel can sit if this is flipped in flipped out I mean flipped in flipped out whatever it's over here so if this was out here the wheel would be sitting higher but that way it allows the roof to sit lower we can lower this down more and make good height over here so the backs are by the frame reason they're by the frame so that they don't bounce we put them a little bit more than a fist of space between them and they're going down the road pretty firmly so they're not bouncing up hitting each other you know being all crazy also we have this whole platform at the bottom this one right here lowered down as much as it can go here's the pin and another reason why we lower it down all the way is because if you watch this back wheel while you lower that down this back wheel goes down even more so if it's up higher at a slant the back wheel sits a little bit higher but we lowered it down and that brought the back wheel down a bit more so yeah this back wheel we stopped right before this roller and we were able to slide the ramps at the top out over here so that we can throw our hook into that hole over there strapped in from this side and that's the truck package for you also we have uh, opened up pockets right here so that we can lower this truck down a little bit more but yeah everything's loaded it's time to hit the road we got a little uh, pizza break so we're being super healthy today are you enjoying your pizza he works hard so he eats yeah. hard but yeah we got a, a lot of our co-workers here i'm somewhere over there thank you david thank you david, thank you, david. oh yeah pizza's on david let's get fat together so we're back on the road we're headed home we should be there at 1 a.m we had a late start to the day because we had to go by Chicago time today and I started my day later since, you know, 
they don't get there until 8 but it's 9 a.m our time well, by the time i got all the cars checked in that was a little process so we're headed home we should be home tonight i hope you enjoyed that two-day segment I hope you got to experience what it's like to unload in Chicago. It ain't too bad, so don't be nervous going in there. You'll be fine, just do your research, put yourself on street view, make sure that you can go in there with the truck. Be a baller, man. Be a baller, make everybody move. Get into that left lane to make that right turn across four lanes, and don't be afraid of anyone. Because the worst that can happen is somebody's gonna honk at you and you're gonna get freaked out and be like what's going on but i don't care you can honk all you want this big rig gotta get through we made it through the day we survived thank god for another day and i just wanted to tell you guys thank you so much for all the love and support that you've been giving to the channel be sure to check out the link in the description to purchase yourself a car hauling shirt if you're new here don't forget to subscribe hit that like button and i hope all you have a great day, night, evening, weekend, whenever you're watching this. God bless you and your families. Catch you in the next video. Goodbye.